you know, we all want the sport to grow and we want to recommend it to friends and say you should watch that game, it's going to be a good game. You really can't say that about any England game except probably France in round five and that's a problem. Now, it's not their fault, they're the exemplars, but it's an issue for the tournament. Yeah, I don't think... <clears throat> I don't... I don't think you should be going into round one already with like, okay, is it going to be a grand slam for England or France? It shouldn't be a foregone conclusion. Mm. And unfortunately for the last number of years, that's exactly what it is. And it's a few key games that are going to be relatively balanced and you're you're kind of like, oh, could, could swing either way. But in instances like this, it's like, well, how much are England, how much are France going to to win by? Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, it's, it's, it's not up to England to slow down. It's up to the other nations to to catch up. That's the bar that's been set mm. and we need to massively speed up the progress because we, we are progressing, but probably not at the rate. If we want to be in Twickenham in two years' time mm. and have a slightly healthier score line, it needs to be done a, a lot faster. Other other pieces need to be in play as well. And Jenny, I don't think it's just Ireland. Like if you look at their scoreline against Scotland mm. and Wales, like it's not just an Ireland problem. It's a, I suppose England know they're going to win a Grand Slam year in, year out. It's that World Cup that they're really targeting mm. and they didn't win that last World Cup. So that's why they look to change their game plan. They look to change away from the malls to bring their backline into their attack. And today we saw that and they're, they're prepping in the Six Nations for the WXV competition. They're prepping for global competitions. It's almost a foregone conclusion that they're going to win a Grand Slam and it's just prepping for that next level up. It just, it's, it's such like anathema to be using a Six Nations game as like, well, let's try this out today, guys. I mean, that's not what a Six Nations should be. No, it's crazy. And like, I know it's a long time ago, but you're talking about eight years that that difference. I mean, Ireland won it in 2015. There was a couple of years there. Yes, originally they were the, the leaders in the game and everyone was trying to catch up with them. But it's, it's, it's such a shame that in those eight years, I suppose they've just advanced so much. And as Jenny said, it's not about them. It's what can we do to make this competition better? How can we get better? And there is green shoots there for Ireland, but I, I really feel like that probably put a little bit of dent in confidence as well. Yeah, I would think so. Do you feel anyone's closing the gap on them, France aside? No. I, not really. I think like Scotland have shown patches of some really nice play with ball in hand, but again, it's very inconsistent, similar to their men's side as well. It's like, oh, maybe this is going to be the year and so far, not so much. Mm. Ireland, I still think we're uh, we're, we're, we're a distance off rock away. Bottom. We're, we're off rock bottom. Yeah, we're yeah. picking up the pace. And, and then Wales have been like really um, underwhelming this year as well. It's just they, been they, they could be going backwards. Yeah, um, I think I think the only team at the moment that can potentially put a dint in this England side in the Six Nations is France. But that's if they're having like a really good day. Everything is clicking. Their key players are fit. And they also have home advantage. That's a lot of things that need to swing France's way in order to stop this essentially juggernaut that is England. Mm. And again, I think all three of you said it, England are to be celebrated. They're setting the standard, like what they're doing is phenomenal. Just annoyingly good. <laughs> yeah, 